Yankee. Yeah, yeah. The Jell-O program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with The Knot Was Tied and then Sonata, played by the orchestra. <laughs> The birthstone from May, the emerald, is a jewel that is said to bring real contentment. And the same thing is true, ladies and gentlemen, of that perfect jewel of a dessert, Jell-O. Well, there's nothing like a grand meal topped off with a rich, shimmering mold of Jell-O to put a person at peace with the world. Jell-O's beautiful jewel-like colors hold a promise of true enjoyment, a promise that is always fulfilled by Jell-O's delightful goodness. You'll find in Jell-O a new dessert pleasure that comes from Jell-O's superb flavor. A flavor as refreshing as the juicy, ripe fruit itself. And you'll be pleasantly surprised to discover how easy Jell-O is to prepare because it dissolves instantly even in lukewarm water and sets as quick as a wink. So try Jell-O tomorrow, friends, in any of Jell-O's six delicious flavors, strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, or lime. And by the way, the next time you try a strawberry, raspberry, or cherry Jell-O, just notice how much better they are than they've ever been before. Each has a new, improved flavor obtained by using a natural flavor base artificially in hand. And the result is something really swell. A rich, unique goodness that you get only in genuine Jell-O. Try a colorful mold of bright, tempting Jell-O tomorrow. The knot was tied in Ensenata, played by the orchestra. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, as we mentioned last week, Jack Benny has started production on his new picture, Charlie's Aunt, in which he masquerades as a woman. So without further ado, let us eavesdrop on Jack's dressing room at 20th Century Fox Studio, where he's getting ready to go on the set. Take it away. Now, Rochester, hurry up. I want that cork that's pulled tighter. I'm pulling, boss. Ooh, you don't have to put your knee in my back. What's the matter with you? You've been half an hour getting me dressed. Well, boss, I'm not used to women's clothes. What you need is a maid. I don't need a maid. Just use your head, that's all. You ought to know that my pantaloons go under my petticoat. <laughs> now, let's see. Uh, hand me my wig. Old Faithful or the one you wear in the picture? <laughs> The one I wear in the picture, with the curls on it. I want to be all dressed in my costume by the time the gang gets here. They're coming over to watch me shoot. Here you are, boss. Thanks. Darn it, these curls always get in my eyes. Oh, well, I'll just have to peek through them. <laughs> According to the blueprint here, you got it on backwards. <laughs> backwards? Obviously. Well, how do I know about this stuff? Oh, by the way, Mr. Carnegie, you're supposed to be my makeup man, and all you do is sit in the corner and stare at me. Why don't you get started? Well, frankly, I don't know where to begin. <laughs> oh, you don't? Well, let me tell you something. My makeup man at Paramount never had any trouble. He used to make me look good. I know. The whole industry's talking about it. <laughs> oh, don't be smart. Now, get over here and make me up, or I'll tell Mr. Zanuck on you. He's the head of the studio, and I play polo with him every Saturday. Will you please hold still? Hold still, hold still. Now, close your eyes. I want to glue your eyelashes on. Oh, all right. Get going. What's that? I did it again, boss. I caught another mouse. <laughs> Rochester, how many times do I have to tell you that's not a mouse trap? That's a bustle. <laughs> The idea. A bustle? Yes. Okay, I'll take the cheese out. <laughs> take everything out. I have to put it on in a few minutes. There. There, that's fine. What are you talking about? You've got the lashes on my lower lid. I look like I'm peeking over a head. <laughs> a fine thing. Oh, nobody will notice it. They will, too. <laughs> now, now paint my lips on, will you please? 
And I'll give you a hint, they go horizontal, not vertical. <laughs> what a makeup man. Come in. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Well, get a load of those eyelashes. You look like you're peeking over a hedge. You see? You see? I told you. <laughs> now, now put them where they belong, Mr. Carnegie. Oh, very well. What a dodo. You think you know everything, don't you? If you didn't remind me of my mother, I'd punch you right in the nose. <laughs> Oh, yeah? Mary, hold my dress. <laughs> I'll show him. Now, Jack, be careful. He's got much longer fingernails than you have. What do I care? Sit down, Mary. Oh, say, Jack, here's that pair of earrings you wanted to borrow. Thanks. Well, what do you know? I gave you these earrings for Christmas, didn't I? Yeah, one in 39 and one in 40. <laughs> well, they're very expensive. Oh, Rochester. Yes, ma'am. Stop with that yes, ma'am. <laughs> Rochester, as soon as the picture is over, remind me to return these gold earrings to Miss Livingston. Don't ever drop them in spinach. You'll never find them. That green is antique. And we'll get a better gag later. Now, <laughs> Mr. Carnegie. <laughs> now, Mr. Carnegie, will you please finish making me up? After all, I'm not supposed to be Betty Grable. In the first place... Hey, Jack, look who's on the horse. It's Mr. Zanik. Hello, Mr. Zanik. Isn't that a beautiful, isn't that a beautiful horse, Mary? He keeps it right here on the lot. You ought to know, eh, Jack? <laughs> Mary, if you mention one word about that to anybody, you'll get yours. Say, Rochester, run over to the set and ask the director how soon he'll leave you. Yes, sir. Oh, say, boss, can I put in a word for myself? Rochester, I've already explained to you that you're not going to be in this picture. You're out of it. Well, don't look for a long run on Central Avenue. <laughs> They'll like it, don't worry. Now get over that set. Okay. Here's Mr. Wilson and Mr. Day, boss. Oh, hello, Don, Dennis. Hi, oh, hello, Jack. Hi, Mary. How are you doing? Well, what do you think of me, boys? Oh, you're pretty as a picture, Jack. Mr. Benny, what are you wearing a dress for? Well, Dennis, in the picture, Charlie's aunt, I'm Charlie's aunt. Oh, well, why doesn't Charlie have an aunt that's a woman? Well, he has got an aunt that's a woman, but I'm his aunt that's a man. I mean, I mean, when his real aunt doesn't show up, I'm the ant that takes his ant place. Do you understand? Who, me? <laughs> Who the heck do you think I'm talking to? <laughs> Sit down, Dennis. I'll explain it to you later. Hey, Jack, this is a pretty swell dressing room we've got here. Beautifully furnished, isn't it? Yes, Don. Frigid air, shower, bath, and everything. Oh, boy, a shower. Certainly is lovely, Jack, but what's that pitchfork doing in the corner? <laughs> Mary. Uh, yes, Don, it is lovely. This is about the swankiest dressing room on the lot. But what about that pitchfork? Oh, that. Uh, there's a clause in Jack's contract. You've got to take care of Mr. Zanuck's horse. <laughs> never mind. Why, I never heard of such a thing. Well, you see, Don, I have what is known as an actor stable boy contract. <laughs> see, they have a lot of those two-way agreements. See, mine is like a producer-director contract. Only... Only you're in there pitching. <laughs> well, it's more or less of a personal favor, so I don't mind. Of course, I could kill my agent. <laughs> oh, well. There we are, Mr. Benny. You're all made up. Thanks. I'll see you on the set. Okay. Bring your pitchfork, you little devil. Get out of here! <laughs> I have to put up with that guy every morning. But at that, I do look cute in this outfit, don't I? You certainly do, Jack. You know, I think these curls are just the right touch. Hey, listen to that. Who's taking a shower? It must be Dennis. He went in there. Oh, well, I'll be darned. I hope the kid didn't forget to take his clothes off. I'll bet eight to one he sings. Well, naturally, all tenors sing in the shower. Sing, Dennis. You know, I think these curls add just the right touch to my face. They give it a soft outfit. did before, but now I do fall. Till you came along, 
I never would believe Love could make me feel just the way I do Always was immune to summer nights in June But when I looked at you I knew it must be true I do, do you Do you believe in love? I never did before, but now I do. Whenever you're near me, I thrill with happiness. And if that isn't love, I miss my guess. What else could bring an angel down to earth? When you're in my arms, I wish and wear these hearts. Oh, yes, I do believe in love. That's well. Uh, very good, Dennis. You can dry yourself now. Where are the towels? In the laundry. They'll be back Thursday. <laughs> okay. As soon as they come, throw one in. I will. The kid's got more patience. Say, I wonder... I wonder why they don't call me on the set. By the way, Jack, is Phil coming over to watch you work today? Yeah, he'll be along pretty soon. Say, what do you think about Phil getting married? Wasn't that a surprise? It sure was. And incidentally, kids, I got a great idea. When Phil comes in, let's not say a word about it and see how he takes it. Yeah, let's make off like we don't know anything about it. Oh, he's so embarrassed he won't know what to do. Now, look. <laughs> look, kids. Look, kids, as soon, as soon as he walks in, I'll... That must be the set for him. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. The director says he'll be ready for you in about 10 minutes. Okay. In the meantime, can I ask him about me being in the picture? Rochester, I told you there's no part for you. The scene is in England. You can't be an English butler. No, but I can be a Corbin copy. <laughs> Never mind. Tell the director I'll be over in a few minutes. Okay. Cheerio, boss. I wish he'd stop bothering Mr. Mayo. Do you think Archie Mayo is a good director for you, Jack? Oh, he'll be marvelous. He's made a lot of important pictures. The Great American Broadcast, Four Sons, Marco Polo, Convention City, Petrified Forest. Well, if he made Petrified Forest, he'll be perfect for you. <laughs> well, maybe that's a funny gag, but I don't get it. Now, ribbing is all right here, Mary, but when we're on the set... Hey, wait a minute, I'll bet that's Phil. Now, remember, no talk about his marriage. Come in. Well, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Mary. Don. How are you, Phil? How's the boy? Oh, I can't complain. I've been on a little vacation down in Mexico. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, did you, uh, uh, did you go down there for a rest, Phil? Yeah, I kind of wanted to change the scenery. You know how it is. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes, uh, Mexico is beautiful. Oh, tears. <laughs> hey, Jackson, this is some dressing room. Sure is ritzy. You like it, Phil? You know, uh, Alice Faye used to have this dressing room. Alice Faye? Is she that cute little blonde? You know who she is. <laughs> and we can't hold back any longer, Phil. Congratulations. I hope you and Alice will be very happy. Congratulations, Phil. Oh, good luck, Phil. Atta <laughs> boy. Well, doggone, so you went and done it, huh? Yeah, believe me, Jackson, this is a life. Home every night for dinner, then I put on my slippers and we sit in front of the fireplace for hours. You two sit by the fireplace in this hot weather? Who knows about the weather? <laughs> well, love... Love sure is a wonderful thing. 
Well, as long as we're all here, let's go over on the set. They're waiting for me. Okay, Jack. I'll take this mouse trap along. That's my bustle. Take it. So long, Dennis. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. If you run across a towel, let me know. We will. Come on, kids. Stage four is right down this way. Oh, by the way, Jack, uh, before you start shooting, is there any place in the picture where you can mention Jell-O? Well, if it could be done in a subtle way, Don. Have you any suggestions? Well, I noticed that your wig has six curls on it, so I thought it'd be rather clever if they were in different colors, like <laughs> strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. Well, yes, that's novel, all right, Don, but you see, this picture is not in catchy color, so they wouldn't identify the flavors. They would if you hung a fruit on each curl. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. Well, Don, that might be good for a flash, but I doubt that it would sustain through the whole picture. I'll keep it in mind, though. We turn to our right here, fellas. Say, Jack, isn't that Cesar Romero coming towards us? Where? Oh, yeah. Joe, this costume I got on to was all the boys. Watch the clerk with him. Gee, he's handsome. Hello, Mr. Romero. Hello, miss. Get this. Hello, Cesar! Hello, Jack! <laughs> Oh, nuts. He's the only guy that didn't fall for it. Gee, I hope I know my line. The director gets so mad when I hold up. Oh, hello, Mr. Danny! Hi, ho, Freddy! <laughs> Gee, he's so proud of his organization. And you can't blame him either. Gee, that's a beautiful horse he's riding. It sure is. Is that a Palomino? No, it's a pal of Jack. <laughs> Now, cut that off. Now, uh, here's the stage, fellas. Now, listen, Mary, I'm warning you for the last time. When we're on that set, I don't want you to be wisecracking all the time. Mr. Mayo isn't temperamental, but I'm taking a chance now bringing you on the set without permission. So you just sit over in that corner and watch out for... Represents an English garden. Come on, they're going to shoot over there by the gate. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Quiet on the stage. Listen, boys. Cut out that noise. The director's in a race. Now settle down. Uh, those, uh, those are Mr. Mayo's assistant directors. They used to be a trio in Waterville. Baldy, Bride, and Baldy. <laughs> Nice boy. Huh? Say, Jack, who's that fellow crawling around on his hands and knees? Where? Oh, that's Pev Marley, the cameraman. The cameraman? Yes, he broke his glasses the other day, and he's afraid he'll bump into something. <laughs> I hope the sound man doesn't lose his ear trumpet. Say, Jackson, ain't that Kay Francis standing over there? Yes, we're doing our first scene together in the picture today. Come on over, Phil. I'll introduce you to her. Now, wait a minute, Bob. What are you trying to pull? You're talking to a married man. <laughs> What are you getting excited about? I'm only going to introduce you to the girl. Well, you know how weak I am. <laughs> All right, Phil. Stay here with Don. I'll see you later. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. All this noise must faulty. We're head men here. The land and ear. To Baldy, Clyde and Baldy. We have no head. You know, I, um, you know, I worked with those boys once in Peoria. They used to do a trapeze act. Two of them fell off a lot. Huh? <laughs> well, um, 
Excuse me, fellas. I'm going over and uh, I'm going over and talk to Kay Francis. Uh, I've never met her, Jack. Can I come along? Not now, Mary. You charge me twenty-five cents to come on this set, and I want to meet Kay Francis. <laughs> All right, come on. Now, Mary, Mary, don't let this get around, but I hear that Kay's nuts about me. Oh, you think every girl you work with in a picture is nuts about you. Well? You haven't got as much sex appeal as a smoked whitefish. Oh, yeah? I'll go up any, against any whitefish you dig up, sister. <laughs> I'm telling you, the girl likes me, so don't start anything. Well, hello, Kay. Oh, hello, Mother. <laughs> Mother, it's me, Jack. Pardon me. Well, you you look gorgeous in that outfit, Kay. That dress is very flattering to your figure. Thank you, Jack. And that's a stunning gown you have on. Do you think so? Yes. But pull it up a little. Your tattoo shows. <laughs> Oh, yes, I must remember that. Well, Kay... Uh, Kay, uh, here we are, finally making a picture together. Kay Francis and Jack Benny. Gee, isn't it thrilling? Gosh, aren't you excited? Aren't you, Kay? What do you want me to do, pant? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> No, of course not. Are you sure you're nuts about Jack? Mary! <laughs> oh, uh, pardon me, Kay. This is Mary Livingston. Oh, hello, Mary. I've always enjoyed you on the radio. It's a pleasure to meet you. Well, that's too, too sweet of you. <laughs> Mary, what's the matter with you? Uh, don't, uh, don't pay any attention to her, Kay. She's always a little jealous. Oh, I don't mind. After all, Mary and I have something in common. Oh, are you jealous too? No, but I used to shop at the May Company. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, very good, Kay. Very good indeed. Give me my quarterback. <laughs> Nothing doing. You met her, didn't you? You know, Kay, I was just thinking, the scene we're going to do today is where you find out I'm not Charlie's aunt, but that I'm really a man. And that's the beginning of our romance. Yes, I've read the script. Oh, have you? Well, it's a wonderful situation, but it lacks something at the finish. Don't you feel that we ought to embrace and kiss each other so that the audience will realize we're in love? Don't you feel that way? Frankly, I feel a kiss there, you know? I mean, uh... A kiss would seal our relationship. Well, why does a kiss a seal? <laughs> well, I'm serious, Kay. Well, I don't agree with you, Jack. A kiss at that point would spoil the entire story. Oh. Uh, well, don't you think that... Jack, why don't you speak to the director about it? Okay, Kay. Well, that's quite a pun. <laughs> oh, okay, Kay, yeah. That's a good one. Jack Jerk, there's another pun. <laughs> Mary, please. Yes, Kay, I'll speak to... Oh, here comes Mr. Mayo now. Uh, uh, hello, Mr. Mayo. Hello, Archie. Hello, Jack. Hello, Kay. <laughs> well, well, Archie, here I am, raring to go. We'll find out. Uh, now, Kay... Uh... <laughs> now, Kay, you understand the first scene we're shooting is the one where you discover that Jack is really a man. Yes, Archie. And as I understand it, the situation comes to me as a surprise. Exactly. Oh, Archie. Archie, uh... <laughs> oh, Archie, Miss Francis had a rather good suggestion a moment ago. She thought that at the finish of the scene, we ought to embrace and kiss each other. Isn't that a good idea? Why, Jack Benny! I mean, how, uh, how do you feel about it, Archie? I don't feel about it. The kiss is out. <laughs> oh. Oh, well, tough luck, Kay. <laughs> It's, uh, it's too bad They told me about you, but I wouldn't believe it <laughs> Well, I... Uh... Now, come on now, you lovely people Let's rehearse it the way it's written All right, all right Oh, pardon me, Archie This is Mary Livingston Oh, how do you do? Hello, Archie You ought to lay off the starchy <laughs> Oh, 
Mary, he's not so plump. Now listen, Jack, let's get going, let's rehearse. Well, Mary insulted you. She said you were fat. Well, I am fat. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, now, everybody, quiet for rehearsal. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. They're ready for rehearsal. Hickory, dickory. Dickory, doc. The mouse ran up the bustle. Oh, Mother Goose. <laughs> oh, what? What is this, anyway? Come on, let's cut the clowning. Now, you've got the first speech, Kay. You've just found out that Jack is not Charlie's aunt, but you kid him along. Yes, I understand. And, Jack, you're still the woman. Yeah, I get it. Now, go ahead, Kay. Read your first line. <clears throat> so you're Charlie's aunt, eh? That's a coincidence. I knew your late husband quite well. I knew your late husband quite well. Well, Jack, what are you waiting for, the Robert E. Lee? Oh, pardon me. I was worried about Dennis Day. He needs a towel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, give me, uh, uh, give me that again, Kay. So you're Charlie's aunt, eh? That's a coincidence. I knew your late husband quite well. Oh, did you really? Hiya, Jack. You're a woman. Oh, did you really? Hiya! Oh, did you really? How's that? I mean, how's that? Is that a woman? Nobody I know. Well, that's the best I can do. Well, now, look, Jack, your voice is all right, but remember you're in England, so talk with an English accent. Well, Mr. Pearlberg, the producer, said I should do it my own way. I don't care what Pearlberg says. Talk with an English accent. All right, all right. Give me that lead again, Kay. I knew your late husband. I knew your late husband quite well, and I wish you were with him. That's not the line! <laughs> Now, please, Kay. Hey, Jack. What? I'm beginning to like her. Oh, stop. <laughs> now, Kay, give me the whole speech, will you, please? Oh, my goodness. Now, remember, Jack, an English accent. Go ahead, Kay. So you're Charlie's aunt, eh? That's a coincidence. I knew your late husband quite well. Oh, did you, Riley? <laughs> Riley, what kind of an accent is that? Well, that's the best I can do. Anyway, I'm not English. I was born in Waukegan. I'm going to see Mr. Pearlberg. Quiet! 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 Now cut that out, you guys. Heaven knows I'm not fussy. But if you think I'm going to change my personality and my character just to make you happy, you... Oh, hello, Mrs. Zanny. You've got another thing coming, and I'll tell you something else. This wig I'm wearing is too darn hot. Oh, go grab a pitch for it. I'm talking to Mr. Mayo. You know, Archie, this isn't the first picture I've ever made. I fought with other directors, too. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to read my lines my way. Come on, Kay, give me that line again. I know you're late. Springtime is salad time, friends, and here's a salad that's right in tune with the season. It's called Cool Cucumber Salad. And a more tempting, taste-teasing salad just never was invented. It's easy to make, too. Simply prepare one package of lime jello as you usually do. Add one teaspoon of vinegar and a dash of salt and chill until slightly thickened. Then fold in one cup of diced cucumber, mold, and serve on lettuce with mayonnaise. You'll find this gay springtime salad a grand treat that the family will enjoy the whole year round because it has such a swell, tantalizing flavor and such an inviting appearance. And it's a salad you'll enjoy making because it takes almost no time at all. So start serving it now. For a delightful salad, try this intriguing combination of cool, crisp cucumbers and delicious lime jello. We're a little late, but thanks, Miss Francis and Mr. Mayo. Good night, folks. Cool, refreshing, homemade ice cream. It's easy to make. Inexpensive, too. And boy, is it swell. Yes, everybody has a good word to say for homemade ice cream. It's a grand treat and easier than ever to make with Jell-O freezing mix. Blended with milk and cream and frozen in your automatic refrigerator, Jell-O Freezing Mix turns out exquisite velvety smooth ice cream. And you can enjoy this deluxe ice cream in a whole variety of grand flavors. So get Jell-O Freezing Mix tomorrow for luscious homemade ice cream, freshly made when you want it, just the way you want it. This is the National Broadcasting Company. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com dot com.